I get to get back to work. Hey, shine like go. They don't want story, man. They want the sound bite. I'm like, no. Look around like they see you on the mound, they don't see you on the climb. Right? Me and all of mine in the power line. Look at this and what you find. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Josh. I'm the founder and master electrician here at Empowered Electric. And I wanna to talk to you guys today about stranded wire. Stranded wire isn't something that is typically used on construction job sites, especially when dealing with number 12, but it's something that if you know how to make up properly, you can save yourself a lot of heartache, a lot of uh, bad connections. And I'm just telling you, bad connections lead to a lot of bad things on construction sites. So rather than just thinking you know everything, why don't you come in here and I'll show you, show you my tips and tricks. So guys, in case you don't know what the difference between a solid and a stranded wire is, they're both the exact same size. So a number 12 solid and a number 12 stranded are essentially the same size. I know some geeks are gonna be referencing the code book and be like, well, no, actually it's a little bit, I don't care. They're essentially the same size that can carry the same amount of current. It's just one is a solid piece of copper conductor or aluminum, stay away from aluminum. And the other is a bunch of tiny strands twisted together. It offers a little bit more flexibility, a lot, a little bit easier to pull, but a solid has a better um, connectivity, better connections. So we, we focus on solid, but that's the difference between solid and stranded. Just like any box makeup or wire makeup, whether it's solid or stranded, you don't wanna walk up and just start cutting and making stuff up. You wanna take time to assess the box. And so that's what I'm gonna do right here. As I look at this box, I see that I have a white and a blue pair, a white and a blue pair, those are gonna go together. Now, you could also see if the, they were numbered or something, but I see that there's only one set of blue and one set of blue going out, so I know these are made up. Now, I've got three blacks, and as soon as I grab these wires, I do notice that these are a little different. It appears, we can see here that these wires are solid, and this wire is stranded, so that's gonna be unique. I'm gonna make those up after the fact because I know they're black and white and also there's a solid one. And then I got my grounds here. So that's, that's pretty simple. So I have a good assessment of the situation. Now, another thing I'm noticing is that this blue and white right here, this hot and neutral conductor, blue and white, is taped down here and not identified at the wire. So whenever I go to cut these, that, that combination is gonna be gone. And I wanna always think about the person coming after me, whether it's somebody adding wire to this box or troubleshooting or whatever it is. They're not gonna troubleshoot this box, so I'm gonna make it up perfect. But you wanna think about the person behind you. So before I cut this, I'm gonna take my tape out, or if, you, or if they were numbered, you would use a number book. I'm gonna identify it at the end of this conduit. And I'm also gonna see, yep, the blacks were also identified that way. Now that's not somebody being lazy. Maybe they pulled the head out really long and cut it and that's where it was taped. There's a lot of reasons, but before I go making up these wires and tying them together, why don't I just identify them at the base of the conduit? Anyways, I'm gonna grab my white and blue conductors here and here. Now, one thing that I talked about, one thing that I talked about in the last one was I just took some strippers or I took my diagonal cutters or I took my linemen's and I cut them, okay? Somebody commented, which greatly so, is when you cut a hot and a neutral conductor together, if there was any charge, if there was any electricity, if there was any current on there, you're gonna blow up your cutters. Now, I know for a fact that this is dead, so I will cut it all together. But if there is any hesitation, you could use a presence tester or a voltmeter that could test that. But you wanna be very careful anytime you are cutting wires and neutrals or grounds together because you can blow up your strippers. I've done it many times. So anyways, so I cut them and then I'm gonna strip them out, right? And so what do we do? We always strip a little more than what we need. Stripping the insulation off stranded wire is a little more tough. Now you can see, you see that? This, see the strands? That's number, that's stranded wire versus solid wire. Solid wire, you can see here, solid copper conductors. This is a lot of little strands. Now, when you get to bigger wire, number eights and above, it all, well, no, there's solid number eight, number six, number four. But for the most part, when you start to get into bigger wires, everything is solid. The stuff that goes to your panel in your house or big service panels. And what you're gonna wanna do here, you know how on solid we would twist them together? Well, watch this. When you twist these together, it can get really weird. Like this. You gotta be really, really careful. See how it just flares out like that. 
you wanna make sure, and so I'm actually not grabbing tight. I'm not grabbing tight with these linemen. I'm kind of very slowly kind of twisting and pinching at the same time. Twisting and pinching. And I'm kind of sliding down too. You cut it, and see, whenever you cut it sometimes, it, at the end of your lineman, it'll leave this little tail. You gotta be really careful about that. You don't want that, because it'll make a bad connection in your wire nut. Now, this is actually, one trick that I learned is that when you put the wire nut on, you twist it counterclockwise until you feel it kind of snug down to the bottom. You don't just start twisting because it can get kind of bound up with the stranded wire. Put it on there, twist counterclockwise a couple times until you feel it slide down and then you twist it. Twist it all the way on there, okay? Good, give, give the wire a little tug, hold onto the wire nut, you're good to go. Now watch this blue wire. I'm gonna show you something here. Twisting, see how it's getting all Man, finagled like crazy. I hate stranded wire so much. Um, we actually don't. We actually don't use stranded wire for almost anything. But I'm twisting. I'm pinching gently. I'm pulling it down. Now I want to show you something. What not to do. So with all this extra copper, I put this wire nut on and I twist it. Now watch this. Get snug. It gets tight. Look at that. I've opened many a boxes and seen that. I'm gonna tell you right now, that is a fire hazard. That is a fire hazard, that is a short hazard, that is a shock hazard. And I've even seen people go, you know what? Rather than fixing the problem, I'm just gonna take some tape and I'm gonna wrap around there like so and voila, no copper wire is shown. I'm gonna tell you right now, that's a hack job. Don't do that, that's disgusting. Take that off right now, Mr. or Mrs. or whatever, and unscrew that, okay? Best place to put a wire nut? Uh -uh. What's up? Learn to talk with a wire nut in your mouth. Rather than pushing the wire all the way down and leaving that tail, cut it right there in the middle. Boom, look at that nice cut. Put that on there, spin it counterclockwise till I feel it click. Boom, twist it clockwise, pull on it tight. There we go, that's a good connection. We've got good connections with those number 12 salt or stranded wires, okay? Push them there in the back. One of the reasons people would pull solid or stranded wire is it has a lot more flexibility. And so when you're pulling it through conduit that has one, two, three uh, 90s in it, it's gonna pull a little bit easier. Um, but when it comes to makeup, when it comes to pigtail, when it comes to landing on things, it's just not as good. When it comes to box makeup, it's just not as good. So while pooling might be easier, I don't think the overall, just uh, the overall quality is easier. And honestly, in a lot of spec books, spec books will sometimes not allow using stranded number 12 or number 10. So even though the code says it's allowed for a safe and efficient installation, um, the specs won't allow it. So be very, very careful with that. But in certain situations, you're gonna find yourself where you have some solid wires and you have some stranded wires and you've gotta make it up. So I, stri I strip my stranded. Now I'm gonna strip my solid. And this right here, um, I don't know why it does work the best, but this is the best way I've found to make up whenever you're dealing with solid and stranded wire. Is what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make up my two solid wires first. Rather than trying to twist my solids and my stranded together, it kind of becomes a mess. So I will take the solids and I will twist them together very tight like any other wire makeup. I'm gonna cut them. And then I'm gonna bring the, the stranded over to the solid and I'm going to put them into the twist. See how there's this twist here, that groove? I'm going to lay it in there and I'm gonna kind of allow, I'm gonna twist this stranded around the solid, lining it up in that groove. Now, see whenever I get done, there's still a little bit of wildness going on at the end. Cut that off. Let go of it, it's, hold, it's held in place. Use my wire nut, twist it counterclockwise, twist it down. I'm telling you, I don't fully understand why, but when you do it this way, when you make up the two solids and then the stranded, whether it's one, two, or three, look, I'm pulling on that stranded, it's not coming out, you know it's a good solid connection. Boom, done. Same thing with these 
black wires. I'm gonna make up the black wires just like I would of any other solid connection, twisting them very good and tight, pinching them. Sometimes when you're early on in your career, this will be very tiresome on your thumbs. Man, you just gotta keep working at it. Nobody got fit in one day. Your hands aren't gonna get fit in one day. It's one of the things that electricians are known for, that strong grip, right? And complaining. Electricians are known for strong grips and being whiners, but you know, I love you. I'm one of you. Twist it around it, cut it to length, boom. You have a good connection there. That's a yellow, I don't want that. Bada bing, baby. Good connection. Now, whenever I fold these wires in, you know, there might be a future video on box makeup. You want to accordion style these boxes in. There's no device, so there's no pigtail needed. So I can get all these wires in kind of nice and neat and lined up well. Then we got these grounds. And these grounds are just a bunch of nonsense, right? I've got one stranded there. I've got another stranded there. I've got two solids here. So let's take a look and how this is gonna work. Now, line up the backs of the insulation, twist the grounds really good and tight, and strip these ground wires. Now, when I strip these ground wires, I somebody comment below, not that I'm an idiot, but comment why it's harder to strip stranded wire than solid. I hate stranded wire. I just really don't like it. I don't know what's going on there acting ridiculous. Now, in this situation, you know, if I was just one, I could line it up like that. But since it's two, what I like to do is kind of get these together a little bit, twist them a little bit, see how they flail out, and then combined, put them together right here. Now, once again, the reason I'm telling you Whenever you don't do it like this, when you don't make up the solids and then twist the ground or twist the stranded around it, what happens is they don't line up, they get kind of tangled. And whenever you're done and you put a wire nut on, for some reason, one wire or two will not be tight in the wire nut. And when you go to tug on it, they'll pull out. They won't stay connected really good and tight. Keep grabbing the wrong pouch. Get the red wire nut counterclockwise, twist it on good and there you go. One of the things, especially when dealing with sol or stranded wire, which I guess moment of truth here, is you do wanna grab on the wires and pull on them. Cause like I said, if the connection's not good, these wires can slide out and that wouldn't be good. And it might not be as dangerous as like the hot wire sliding out that's gonna cause a shock. Not having a good path of ground is very, very dangerous. So you want to accordion them up. I would put a box cover on there and that would be it. Cool, so there you guys have it. How to make up stranded wire, whether it's just two stranded wires or three, you know that you're gonna strip it, which is a little more difficult than solid. You're gonna strip it long, line up the insulations, and rather than grabbing it tight and twisting it, you're gonna kind of twist and spin and pull all at the same time. I know that seems crazy, it'll make sense because you'll see those wires twist together really nice. You're gonna cut it just like you did solid wire so that there's no crazy stranded ends. Remember when you put that wire nut on, twisting it counterclockwise a little bit until you feel it slide in, then twisting it clockwise to get it a super tight connection. If you do open a box and you find they're solid and stranded, rather than trying to make them all up together, you're going to make up the solids, you're gonna make up the stranded, you're gonna lay them in the groove together well, pull, twist, and grab it all and slide it in there really good. Um, guys, watch it again if it doesn't make sense. Guys, I would stay away from Using stranded wire, it causes a lot more problems than what it's worth. But if your foreman or your journeyman says that's what they wanna do because it's easier to pull, I hope this helps a little bit on how to make it up well. Guys, have a wonderful day. If you can think of any comments or ideas for future videos, comment in the bottom and we'll be sure to record. Have a wonderful day. I got buzz like ether. Throwback hits like Keep up, I might leave ya. Team way up like Kiba.